we have been seeing more and more different variants and treatments on magic cards. But this time around, we're going to see more and more different variants on the mechanics with Murders at Card of Mana. And we're going to dive into some of the complexity creep on the cards. But might Murders at Card of Mana actually be a really good set? Let's dive into it. So Murders at Card of Mana invites you to play the detective. And this is a very good idea, had it not been due to the fact that Wizards of the Coast themselves, in a recent video, actually revealed who the murderer is. Playing detective is not going to happen at Murders of Carlo Manor. What is going to happen though, is that we're going to see a lot of variants. We're going to see a lot of different treatments and we're also going to see serialized cards. And this seems to be the new recipe for sets, but there is something new and very exciting for many of you players out there and that is a new rare land cycle. These lands quickly got dubbed surveil lands because they surveil one when they come into play and the best with these rare lands is that they are searchable. They have two land types so you can actually search for them. So if you have a card that says you may search for a forest and put that into play, you can find these rare lands and they are dual colored. A rare land cycle with surveil one and specific land types, that seems good. But again, having tap lands, we know from experience that this is not good. So we are, of course, very interested to see how the community is going to react to these lands. So before going any further, please leave a comment down in the comment section about what you think of these new surveil lands. Are they actually good enough and will they see play in any of your decks? Leave a comment down below. In Murders at Carlo Manor, we're getting two new mechanics and it's basically maybe even just the same mechanic. Confused? Well, so are we. We're going to see two mechanics, Disguise and Cloak. And they're basically just a more complex, a little beefed up version of Manifest and Morph. With Disguise, you're going to take a creature card and play it face down as a 2-2 creature with War 2. So it is very much similar to Morph mechanic, but this time around, the 2-2 creature is not just a 2-2, it's a 2-2 with War 2. And any time you want, you can pay the mana cost and you can just turn this creature face up. So it's basically just a beefed up morph. The other mechanic is Cloak and Cloak is really much like Manifest since you can just cloak a card from different zones. But you can only turn a cloaked card face up if it's a creature card and only if you pay the mana cost for the creature. Of course, some cards interact with the Cloak mechanic and will enable you to flip a face down card face up. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a creature. So to be completely honest, I think that Disguise and Cloak is kind of a very annoying mechanic because it's just another version of Morph and Manifest. How many rules do they actually expect us to be able to have a grasp upon? So this is another complexity layer in Magic Gathering. The cards have become more complex and now the mechanics themselves are also becoming more complex because it's simply just a beefed out version. You get War 2 and just another layer of complexity and rules upon an already known rule. And I know that Magic Gathering did this because the morph mechanic was a bit weak source after you know, a few years of power creep. But then again, then maybe don't print new mechanics and new powerful cards all the time. Another version of this is the new keyword called Collect Evidence. Collect Evidence is something you can do as an extra cost to cast a card. So for example, you cast a card and if you collect evidence, you have to exile cards from your graveyard in a total number of um, mana value, for instance, eight on the card, analyze the pollen, and then you get to do something extra special or gain some sort of benefit from it when casting the card. In reality, this is almost just some version of Kicker that's a really well-known and old mechanic in Magic the Gathering. So we're seeing a lot of these new mechanics. Another version of this is Sagas. Sagas is a really cool and flavorful card. For this time at Murders of Call of Mana, they got a revamp as cases. In this time around, you're not doing something turn-based and having to wait for the different triggers on the saga. Instead, you have to do something actively, like for instance, control a certain amount of detectives before you can solve the case and move on to the next part of the case card. And in reality, it is just a form of saga. And of course, the renaming of all these mechanics does add some sort of flavor to the murders of Call of Mana to make it more theme-like. But it also does add a lot of confusion and players having to constantly check these different things going on. 
So what do you think of all this complexity creep, the many variants and suddenly also the many variants of mechanics? Let us know down in the comment section. Before moving into talking about all of the awesome cards that you can find in Murders at Cloud of Mana, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're getting any value out of this video. So enough with the bad, what is actually good? Well, in Murders at Cloud of Mana, the cards themselves seem really good. And the first card we'd like to highlight is the new version of Massacre Girl. She turns your little attackers into creatures with Wither, so you're going to you know, distribute all these minus one, minus mine counters upon your opponent's creatures. And should a creature your opponent control die, and if it has less toughness than one, you get to draw a card. And that is powerful. We all know that. Card draw is king in Magic the Gathering. And you can even combine this new version of Magic Girl in Commander, for instance, with Yorgmuff, Thran Physician, because he has the ability to sacrifice stuff and distribute minus one, minus one counters on creatures. And should a creature die from one of these counters, you get to draw a card. So that is actually double card draw. Only downside of this card is, of course, that if you are playing standard, it's four drop. And Shieldred is also a four drop. So there might be some competition right at the four drop spot. Krenko, Baron of Tin Street, is another really cool version of our beloved Krenko card. And what are they doing? They killed him in the set. Not happy about that, by the way. But this card is really cool. I think it's going to be a very great new commander for goblins. It has a lot of interaction with artifacts and if we think back to some of the like old Mirin days, Mirin days, there were a lot of interactions between goblins and artifacts and I think you could definitely build something really cool for commander with this card and I also think that there might be a couple of ways to go infinite and I just want to do a little honorable mention. We have a very nice little goblin called Crime Novelist. This guy is also going to be really cool and have some great effect. He will ramp you some mana and he has a lot of interactions with all kinds of artifact tokens. So treasures, bloods, whatever you have, he's going to be great. And together, I think these, twos are, these two are beginning of a really cool commander deck. Maybe mono red or maybe splashing some of the other colors. Another great card, and this one is white, is Delnay Streetwise Lookout. And this makes your little 1-1s or 2-2s even harder to block for your opponents. So should you face big dinosaurs, this card might give you some advantage. Where this card really shines though, is the second ability, because every time a creature you control the power 2 or less has a triggered ability, that ability triggers a second time. So this can become really powerful really fast. So this card might just see extra play with the Monastery Mentor because, well, that card has power two or less, so it's going to trigger a second time. Cast your spells and flood the board. Have fun. Another great card is War Leader's Call, and this card is in the Burrows Colors. It's one colorless, one white and one red. And it's basically an impact tremors combined with an Anthem effect, because this card gives plus one, plus one to each creature you control. And every time a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may deal one damage to each opponent. I think Venoda is just going to love this card, and your opponents are going to hate you even more for playing it. So the next card is a green card, and it's called Analyze the Pollen. This card is basically going to tutor you up either a land, just a basic land, but if you choose to use this new keyword mechanic, collect evidence, you also get to choose between tutoring up a basic land or a creature card. So getting a tutor for one with this kind of versatility, that seems pretty cool. And continuing the trend from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, we're also going to see a special guest slot in the Murders at Cala of Manor. And this time around, we have seen 10 cards in the special guest slot. And some of these cards are, of course, really spicy, counting among them Field of the Dead and Gamble. The special guest slot is going to be a spicy slot, but remember, it's a really rare slot and you are not going to be able to draw that many cards from boxes as you might think. So as you can hear, we are going to see some really powerful cards in Murders at Gallo Manor. And we also know that Krenko is going to die. But don't get too sad yet, because we know that characters have a tendency to magically, you know, get better, just see Nyssa after the Friction Story Arch. So one of the things that we really cared about with the Friction Story Arch was that they told us it's going to really fundamentally change the entire multiverse. Well, we haven't quite gotten that, I think. One of the only things we got out of it was that Wizards 
kind of just wanted a reason to make you know planeswalkers special again so instead of them having a lot of planeswalkers walking around they have these omen paths instead and apparently kellen traveled all the way from eldraine to ravnica to put Participate in this set, and it does feel like they're trying to make Kellen the like lead character, main figure in Magic: The Gathering, and I don't know how much I really like that. I think it's it feels kind of weird. Then he's a detective in this set, and in the previous set he was something else. I don't know. I'm not really buying it, but I do think that there are a lot of spicy cards, and I'm more. Um, pretty much more positive than I thought I would be. And he seems to be a quick learner because it didn't take much time for him to become an investigator. But having a dead goblin is a good start. And hopefully we're going to see a lot of more dead goblins. That is pure treachery and this channel does not support any killings of goblins whatsoever. But we do love all of our supporters. Yeah. A big thank you to our YouTube channel members and our patrons and our subscribers. And also a thank you to you for watching this video and supporting the Cardboard Guide. And remember to leave a like, a comment and also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel. If you want to know more about what's going on with Magic the Gathering in 2024, check out this video right up there. And a good goblin is a dead goblin.